What's up guys and welcome back to the No Shang Invitational. This is game two between Adfinem and Alternate Attacks. 1-0 currently for Alternate Attacks. I'm Mike Lars. Gonna be joined by Milan for the second game. Dude, do you think it was a draft issue? Do you think it was a the gameplay issue? What do you think? What happened in the last game? I mean it was kinda of the draft issue. I mean, for sure the ATN, sorry, ATN had a somehow better plan. And they, of course, executed much more better than uh, Adfinem did theirs. But I think, uh, like, letting the Doom through the second phase was the issue, as I mentioned before. Now we're going to see a bit uh, slower approach. If you remember, last draft was go going through, like, two minutes or something. Mm -hmm. It was hell of a ride. Now we're going to see, like, uh, Nature's Propham band. They learned their lesson. I mean, Nisha played amazing game. And I honestly think he's, like, if not the best, one of two best players on the ATN squad. And they should like focus on him, if nothing. They're going to have a first pick for ATN decide. They, of course, decide to go for the Supreme Walker. But let's see what Spartan goes for. There's a Earth Spirit pick open. There's a Beastmaster open. Last time, they, if I'm not mistaken, they went for a Beastmaster Earth Spirit opener. Uh, uh, I think the two of them, like, neither one of those heroes individually was really an issue, I don't think. So I, I wouldn't mind seeing Adfinem go for that one more time. And, well, there's one, and hopefully there's another. There we go. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the Beastmaster clearly did a lot of heavy lifting. Earth Spirit was pressuring everywhere, but just ran into a couple of problems. And even by the end of it, he was still pretty much doing his job, like landing several hero stuns and silences. Pretty much everyone was magnetized. So, uh, yeah, I think these heroes are, are perfectly fine as an opening. They just have to kind of deviate in their next three picks. But uh, as you said, the Doom, uh, really central hero for the alternate attack squad, going to grab that one up, is potentially not going to be quite as devastating because they lack the uh, reinforcements of the Nature's Prophet. But still, for alternate attacks, we saw how aggressive this hero can be. And maybe we'll see in, a, in this game how maybe passive and how he can also play a slow game. Yeah, I like Doom pickup against Beastmaster because you actually can always eat the one necro unit without like if you eat the blue one you don't take damage. You can even if you're like tanky you can eat the red one. Oh, draft goes a little bit faster again. They decide to pick a dead prophet from it. It's a pretty decent matchup for a dead prophet against Invoker, and it's not gonna be a like some bounty hunter or earth spirit roaming around. It's gonna be the other way around. It's gonna be like. Invoker plus Doom against Earth Spirit Death Prophet with both of those roaming uh, supports uh, not gonna be mid all the time. They can make plays F sphere. And uh, I did I expect like for the ATN, I expect seconds. them to pick up some carry more like uh, Lycan maybe even because team teams nowadays like we see Navi or some team like that pick up the Lycan against Beastmaster. He's really good at leaning against him, and he's really good against DP later with all those units just running at him. That's got his Witch Doctor play classic against Beastmaster. And it's like lately, like Witch Doctor is like uh, used more for healing power, which people started using nowadays. It wasn't like before. Yeah, there's very yeah. few points being put into Maledict. Like you'll. Occasionally get that game where you'll have Witch Doctor go like one zero two, and those are like really rare situations. But nowadays it's like you know you get the cast, you get the heal, and then you just go and be unkillable. And uh, sometimes it just distracts a little bit too much away from your allies, and that ends up wasting a lot of the enemy's damage because they're trying to kill a Witch Doctor, who even if he does die, not really a terribly huge deal. Okay, here we go. Deviation from the last game for sure. Not gonna be the carry yet. For alternate attacks, they grab the Witch Doctor. I think, like, in and of itself, Witch Doctor, a perfectly reasonable pick. But, of course, they're going to combo it up with this Faceless Void Chronosphere. They also have Invoker to combo it up as well. Uh, they can't get their Gyrocopter, which is unfortunate. That would have been, just you know, the best combination for alternate attacks. But they could very easily grab someone like uh, Klings, like you mentioned in the last oh. game. And uh, have, okay, no, never mind. They can't back. do that either. But, yeah, they have <laughs> options as far as how much damage they can put into this Chronosphere still. And... Add feed M, they are going to grab a Bane. A decent hero to have for sure versus that Faceless Void, but uh, they're going to get Beaver. team fought. Yeah, that, uh, another one, a hero for ex Exotic Deer can, that can stand on his own on the safe lane and not have much trouble. They're just like doing this. I mean, 
I expect them maybe in the Jagger, but there is uh, too much uh, control on the on the Adfinem side to go with the Jagger because that's one of the heroes that ATN likes to run. That's just like they like to group up, push, and Jagger is perfect for that. Um, so we see, I don't know, like again, uh, ATN having somehow much greedier lineup. Uh, Adfinem is gonna be. Really strong at 15 to 20 minute mark, but maybe even earlier with that uh, that prophet online and uh, beastmaster necros. Like, cause nowadays you cannot really stop beastmaster from farming with the the iron talon and stuff. You can maybe shut him down, even kill twice, but he's still gonna get that 10 to 12 minute mark necro one. And it's gonna be naked with the boots, but it's still fine for it. Like, especially with the as we saw last game, they got they know how to use Beastmaster. So from the point when he gets level 6, they go for a smoke, they, they use him very well. Spartan not gonna decide for a TP play this time. Uh, the top lane, I think Bane was a pretty cool pickup, because uh, Bane's one of the heroes that can solo zone the void, so Gyro should have a pretty good time, and the Nisha on void should have pretty... Sorry, once again, pretty bad time. He's gonna block the camp. Mm. Pretty good for him. Do they have sentries? Yeah, they do. They do. They should be able to de-block it after they, so, after they see that it's blocked. Yeah, maybe they're Again, gonna uh, take care of Nisha's side camp as well. Just try to limit the voids options. He could definitely buy an Iron Talon and do something very similar to what we see Beastmaster very frequently do. Uh, perhaps to a slightly lesser degree, but uh, in this game is going to be a lot rougher for Nisha than in the last game where CK, I think if it was like a CK Lena lane uh, with you know some sort of other non-Phoenix hero, then that would have been really dangerous for the Nature's Prophet. But uh, this lane is definitely one where he's going to be zoned and he's going to be poked at 24-7. And if his time walk is misused, then you know, Nightmare into Rocket Barrage, so much damage. They're going to roll in towards Case or over towards the mid lane. Doom is not really the target you want to go for. However, he's grabbed Devour and they're not actually going to fully commit to him. They want to just secure the rune. And they are going to do just that bounty for bounty. But uh, yeah, Doom, either way, is going to narrowly get out of there. That's what happens when you have boots first on the hero. It's pretty darn difficult to lock him down, let alone kill him. I think uh, well, Adfinem is happy with this. They get the bounty for their mid laner, and they take it away from the invoker. But they are giving somehow, let's say, the best player of AT and the bounty room. He's going to pick up the stall shield, has a triple region, might even do much better on this top lane now than I expected. Let's see what happens. They're gonna try to zone him out. Yeah, but yeah, they're gonna be successful in doing it. But he's gonna almost get a level two and then he starts in becoming dangerous. And when you look at it, like uh, if he's level one only with like maybe ten XP in, they're like being can zone him out. But when he's level two he can get some lucky bashes and with triple region and style shield he can fight up with a Bane that has only one region and four tangos. And of course yeah. that makes it being able to just sit back and fist fight makes it so much easier to get closer to the creep wave to get level 3 and uh, yeah just so much easier they're gonna roll in towards the invoker he's gonna take quite a lot of damage with the drain and the roll in but Supreme not gonna die to that Nisha still duking it out with Bane up towards the top lane he's gotta be a little bit careful because he's already kinda low so he's not gonna get healed up a ton by the time walk but in the trees Nisha should be fine uh, looks like over in mid lane yeah just a little bit of attempt on the oh, bottom lane Skylark Ooh, got aggressed upon himself, but he dodges the Sunstrike, chugs a salve, eats a tango, and will be once again fine. Nisha up towards top lane. Is he in trouble once again? And there's just pressure all over the map, but I feel like it's once again on bottom where we're going to have our action. Skylark is going to get hit with the cask. Swarm is out, plus the Shikuchi. They know exactly where he is, and they're going to cut him off with the clap. Infernal Blade as well. And they're going to grab the kill on the enemy Beastmaster off lane. This is not really your traditionally powerful lane, but... Uh, being that far up is going to mean that uh, just so much right-click damage over time yeah. with that minus armor from the Swarm, which is really underrated as a spell, I feel. Yeah, he, uh, that, that's, Weaver is really dangerous when played safe lane for the offlaners. They cannot really... He has way too much kill potential with the Swarm. And uh, Beastmaster picked up the boots as the moment he was dying, so he did, he's not so unhappy with that. He spent his gold before that. I mean... The problem is this mid lane with this bounty rune, uh, bounty rune uh, advantage and uh, oh, mid. oh, it's gonna get go. Oh. Sunstrike misses though. It's unfortunate because Doom does have haste, so 
probably is or yeah, probably is enough to get the kill or at least force out a fairy fire usage or something like that. But uh, either way, Nisha is now gonna run to Spartan. He's got the silent Spartan, but not gonna commit any mana to that. It's still just one kill for the alternate side, and that one kill, they're not gonna force Skylark out just yet. Hasn't gone for the Iron Talon just yet, but uh, if they kill him off once more, we may just see the Beastmaster just completely abandon this lane. Which of course means that the Witch Doctor can completely abandon this lane as well, uh, and just uh, focus 100% of his efforts into uh, jungling himself up, getting his own levels, and getting closer to that Death Ward mark. Oh, Over towards mid though, Earth Spirit. Looking at Supreme, we have Nisha Nightmared up on the top lane as well. That shouldn't really do a ton. He's going to time walk all of that out. And that is the awkward part of Bane versus Faceless Void. With the Gyrocopter, like, all your Rocket Barrage damage just doesn't work. Uh, I was expecting maybe even the, the Lion was open, but they still go for Bane. Expecting he can solo zone. But now Spartan rotating top. He's looking for a dive. But the time walk is coming off cooldown, so he should not have much trouble. Mid lane, we see uh, Taga almost tripling the CS on Invoker with all those advantages he got from the early game, Bounty Rune and Earth Spirit rotations. And they, this might be a problem. If we see a... Well, it's gonna be a top rune skirmish. <laughs> uh, it's nothing much. They're just gonna take the rune. Uh, no kill potential at all on the Void. For the moment, they ba uh, they're banking on uh, Earth Spirit stun and silence later to kill this Void. Mm -hmm. uh, Right sure. now, there's nothing. If they have like a silence on the Death Prophet, maybe they can make that happen, but uh, it's only level 5 for her, so that's not going to be coming up for quite a lot more time. And last game we saw Supreme getting well, quite a few Sun Strikes, first of all, which as of right now haven't happened. Uh, got a lot of just passive free time to farm up his Midas, and he is behind in farm right now. It's going to be so much more difficult for him to replicate Sounds that. Sounds like Butter is going to be on the mark. Yeah, they get a Skylark again. And Nisha Skylark is now in actually, trouble. He already time-walked yeah. up towards top lane. He's going to get reinforcements a lot of it, but he's already dead. Can they catch... Well, yeah, Madra's stuck in the trees. He is salving up, however, and Doom's going to try to go for Spartan with the Scorched Earth. He will chop him down. Now the cast going to start to fly, which will chain stun Madra, and maybe next time, Doom is sleeping, but the Scorched Earth is still burning. Madra Rocket Barrage will kill off the Doom. However, he'll fall to the Witch Doctor up towards top. TP coming in. Looks like that should just be about it, but Madra gets a double kill off of that. That is, uh, well, first of all, quite nice for the Gyrocopter and alternate forced to uh, rotate out. Yeah, but Witch Doctor from uh, basically solo kill in the end on the Doom, he gets uh, five and a half levels. He's going to have uh, a fast level six, and it's going to be a problem for the from the Dire. It's, it's going to be able to make some kind of rotation mid or top again and get a really huge kill. In the, the bottom lane, Skylark is doing a pretty good job spending his gold before he dies and keeping the uh, at least Witch Doctor on this lane. As you said, he doesn't really want to leave this lane, abandon it, unless he really has to, because he doesn't want to give the Witch Doctor free space to go wherever he wants. I think like uh, 16 CS is still pretty fine for him. Like mid with his Pardon and Doom, just wandering around the room. It's going to be a roll. Yeah, Doom grabs, grabs the room, but still no kill potential. The uh, game is kind of slowing a bit down, but people are gonna start hitting the level six we and have like a smoke. Witch Doctor. Yeah, he's got a good angle on Skylark, who is maybe gonna think he's safe because he has like all his vision in the trees. But now he's gonna blow the smoke. Doesn't see him, I don't think. So it's still nighttime. Well, now he should see him. Witch Doctor is gonna be in range for the cask, but now he's gonna decide against it. Exotic Deer, uh, perhaps not quite close enough to make a jump into that beast match just smoke fails and that is going to be uh well skylark as you said just surviving just trying to scrape together his level six trying to get together that necro book and ad finem they are yeah two kills behind much like in the last game they started things out on a deficit but in this game the death prophet is just doing so much better than the lena and the safe lane the gyrocopter mod actually has farm compared to what the ck had in the last game which was very very little so uh, Ad Finem, two kills behind, isn't really a terribly huge deal since they they can still make more kills happen, and they're looking at Supreme one more time. They see the Doom. That's probably not the correct target to go for, but still the Earth Spirit and Doom both hanging around. It's just a matter of time before someone gets you know, caught in vision range or something and gets rolled in on. Yeah, I mean, the uh, ATN needs to care about this. Doom is level 5, but the Dead Prophet is level 8. He has so much damage with Spirit Siphon level 4. 
you can like put two of those on Invoker and do and he's oh, then one. becomes oh it's gonna be a dive. It's gonna be a roll roll kick in and actually turning he dies before Invoker and it's gonna be a turn kill on Spartan so it ends up two for one with that proper dying before Invoker, so Invoker gets his precious level. He's gonna be hitting this to top. top lane. It's gonna be a kill. This is surprising. They have actually no stuns and they end up killing uh, the boy. I guess Nisha yeah. must have misplayed with the time walk. Yeah, he must have just been a little bit further up the lane, time walked back, still got caught in the call down or something like that. Uh, so yeah, they lose Nisha, which is again a pretty steep cost. Uh, the invoker does end up going down, but ends up actually killing the death prophet. He was taking tower shots the entire time, cold snap as well. So. Maybe there's not enough right clicks coming out from Thug with the phase boots and the null talisman. His right click is not nothing. So uh, being able to interrupt just a handful of those and alternate do make uh, eventually a good rotation over towards mid, but uh, losing your void one more time. And now they smoke up. I think that was actually behind the tree line. So this observer ward from the dire couldn't see them. Uh, I'm not sure about that though. Um, but either way, they're going to go up towards the top lane. They got doom and they got death ward. So if they find anyone... They're in for a lot of hurt, especially since Chronosphere is now just coming up. But, like, Madara is seeing this timing. He knows the board of supports that's hit level 6, so he's farming safely in his jungle, leaving Bane to get his level 6 top and be exposed. So they don't really care if this Bane gets down for the three-man rotation and maybe using some ultis. Uh, are they, yeah, they're just gonna use that. Pro uh, this, this is perfect from ATN. They only use the Vigil Doctor ulti for the kill, still having a Doom. There's a smoke, this is classic. Level 6 or 7 Beastmaster actually going for a smoke with Earth Spirit. Are we gonna see that fancy kick from Earth Spirit into Roar again? <laughs> yeah, probably. If they... Supreme in the trees. Words of wisdom echoing throughout time stay in the trees. Then they will not be spotted, but at the same time, the smoke is now out. And Exotic Deer, Invoker, yeah. They're going to back off for pretty much the same reasons why Madra uh, broke off. Like, you know that at this point, Beastmaster is at least at level 6. Uh, they probably know oh, they saw them. They saw them from the tower. Skalak made a mistake, showed, oh, really? went to the tower range. Yeah, they pinged them out. So and now they're, they're looking at Thug. Like, there's no death ward for this. Exotic Deer is in the area. They'll throw a cask that will not bounce. The Sun Strike will still connect. Thug's now going to get doomed up. They're going to bring down the Death Prophet incredibly quickly. No Siphon to sustain her. The Invoker, though, will fall at the same time. Nisha's going to teleport in. But he has no good Chronosphere angle right now. Calldown's going to zone out a couple from the mid lane. But Skylark, he gets hit with a solo Chrono. Not really sure if he deserves this. But Beastmaster, either way, is going to take a lot of right click damage. Now the cask is going to start bouncing. The Spartan's there to make it bounce back to Skylark. And now it's going to the other heroes as well. As everyone for Ultra collapses onto the Bane. They take out three. They're looking at a fourth. Maybe next time is gonna get chased down by the bug. No surviving this one if you're Bane. Maybe Nightmare Deny. That's not gonna happen. Weaver with the Shikuchi is gonna grab that kill as well. These casks from El Asash have been absolutely insane. Four for one. Pretty good. I mean, this is about the smoke place this early. If you like go for smoke and then that 35 seconds, like smoke expires and you're still looking for a gang. Enemies are gonna be prepared and you're gonna pay for it. So a little bit impatience from the Adfinem, not not calling that gank off and doing something else. I'm just gonna see what what happens now. Invoker is gonna still not be grabbing his Midas because he's the hero that was exchanged for those four kills. But they're not unhappy with it. He's gonna catch up. It's Invoker. Yeah, it's smoke always bottom. does. Elisash, Doom, they have a good angle onto Skylark. Cask once again gonna come through. Kick is gonna land onto three though. Skylark's not dead yet. And Elisash is silent, so he can't get his Death Ward channel up. The Sun Strike's gonna miss, and Skylark is still gonna survive, at least to get the roar off. He will fall in the end. Elisash will not be able to get a fully channeled Death Ward before his teammates get cleaned up. Now Thug's going to arrive from the side. He's got the phase boots, got the siphon with a the kick there. Doom's not going anywhere. They'll lose three and gain only one. Earth Spirit with the kick. Going to save that fight on the bottom lane because if he doesn't land that uh first of all the beastmaster dies a lot faster but i want to say alternate get away with you know only probably one casualty on their side uh those are the streaks given now like uh, beaver had a dominating beaver doctor had a mega kill streak given to the bane that's kind of sad but he gets his mana boots which everyone is happy with that gotta be a tp top from earth spirit just to try to disrupt this tier one for falling down and getting low like uh like Earth Spirit and Bane being both level 8. This is how you 
turn back the early game, if you're having trouble, if you're losing early game, if you give that away that four kills middle and you then kill back, you're gonna get a lot of levels in return. Like, this is huge for both supports. Mm. That's, that's pretty much just like Earth Spirit's earn straight up, which he's now gonna get. As you said, mana boots on the bane. And this is gonna just open up the map a little bit more for the Advent M side to maybe make a play like this over towards mid, Supreme. Oh, he's gonna send a Forge Spirit off to the side, and he will see Madra at least. So he knows that he's in trouble over in mid, and he'll back off. But uh, Advent M getting a pretty good fight is gonna interrupt the alternate momentum just a little bit. But uh, still, that was a Chronosphere-less fight. So we can still see those types of fights coming out from Alton. And they're gonna go up towards Barton first thing. He's going to magnetize a couple, stun a couple, try to roll in, actually. But he's actually not dead yet. 40 HP, he's gonna walk right into a Sunstrike, and he will fall, but Nisha is also gonna fall. He's got cut off by Thug. Elisash is going to arrive, the Doom, and the Death Ward Thug taking so much damage right now. Will they actually be able to kill him off without a denying range? Yes, they will. Now the bug's gonna come, and Death Ward's still firing Madra. Is not gonna get hit with those bugs, so Exotic Deer is gonna call it quits right now. Two for two up towards this top lane. And a grip oh, onto Exotic Deer, he's invisible. Good. But he's still actually being shot at as they... Yeah, well, yeah, they just got him. Got That's going to be yet another kill. Sasha is the fine. only one here. They got another free kill. Well, they got sleep coming out, but no cooldown, so they're going to cool that off. Low HP on Madara. They got a trade towers, mid for bottom one. I think it favors the Radiant. Like, because that mid the Dire Tower is really like opening the jungle of the Dire. Nisha tipping bottom actually, they're gonna look to engage here, it's gonna be a Chrono with a Sunstrike, Skylark is gonna go down, can Spartan do anything besides dying here, he's gonna try to roll away, it's gonna happen, he's looking for an angle, that Prophet comes in, he's not gonna save Spartan, but is he gonna get a return kill on Nisha, time walk is up, he's gonna get away, and that Prophet still chasing for this Doom, no Scorch Surf online, he should be falling down here, the use on the Death Prophet is going to make him much faster oh, than Doom is. Buying time for Supreme to come in though. Doom's alive at 11 HP, will fall, but sets up for a Sunstrike Meteor combo on the Death Prophet. Great awareness there from the Doom that he cannot escape the Death Prophet. Up short top lane now, the Bane! Ooh, going to get buzzed down by the Death Horde again by this Witch Doctor. And Adfinem suddenly find themselves on the receiving end of a 1 for 3 engagement across the map. Uh, but yeah, Doom, recognizing he can't escape the Death Prophet, just is going to waste her time, just, you know make a couple of right clicks forced out from Death Prophet so that Invoker can come in and this Witch Doctor has been one of the more impressive Witch Doctors that uh, I've seen lately. They're gonna get a jump in onto Exotic Deer, Magnetize, Silence, yet invisible. He still has that time lapse uh, like he even needs it. It's a Weaver, he's never gonna die to something like that but uh, Witch Doctor is now level 9 with a point booster. This is not just a support here that you can ignore anymore. You actually have to focus them down quickly or else the Death Ward, especially once it's level 2, will just tear apart your whole team. Yeah, uh, it's uh, uh, going to that Agonist pickup, which might come very early because Witch Doctor is one of those heroes that rushes the Axe and building the Axe is somehow easier than other items. Every part costs about 1k gold and like every time he dies even, he just can get apart before dying. That's gonna go, they're gonna go tier 2 top after this uh, Chrono used and all this stuff. Uh, but Chrono is coming off cooldown in 20 seconds. I think Dire Adfinem knows that and they're gonna back off. They don't wanna fight this early, especially against this all those levels and supports. Level 10 on the Doom, level 4 Infernal Blade. That's something scary. Yeah. Sure. To say the least, like the damage over time from Inferno Blade and Scorched Earth with a cold snap on top, like it's just it was stupid how much damage that does. And uh, if Adfinim actually went for that with the Death Prophet ultimate, they could have put in a lot of damage into the tower, but only would have been like a 10 second window for that to actually do damage before Nisha is able to jump in. And his jump is going to be a little more dangerous now that the Void has grabbed himself a Blink Dagger. So we got that going for the alternate side. Uh, Perhaps the Doom going to be going for a, a Blink Dagger as his next item, and that's not something that uh, is going to take a ton of time for him either. So, uh, Advinem, they have this Death Prophet ultimate they're just sitting on. It's probably going to be Roche, which is the easiest thing for them to get with that. But for right now, we got Bane. He's going to get jumped by a Sun Strike, which is right on the mark. Not split at all. With the Weaver coming in, the Cold Snap, Bane's going to try to put himself to sleep. He can't even get that out. A perfect gank from alternate. Yeah, very good executed from the Supreme Invoker. Uh, Vigilactor is just 
Are they gonna try? There's a death prophet coming in. He should Cask. be canceling. Gonna cancel the... the boulder roll. He's gonna immediately get yeah. stunned up though. Cask still bouncing, not really doing him a ton of favors though. Spartan's gonna get a rock dropped on him, which will roll into Skylark and Thud. Exotic Jar can't get the time lapse off. He was mid cast animation. That first one I'm on board with. The second gank around, that was a little bit too much. Ganking an Earth Spirit like that. Now Alasash. Probably gonna have to TP out, but there's a Yule Thunder in the Death Prophet. No, he's gonna back off. Wait for Nietzsche to arrive. With Doom coming in from the river as well, uh, going into a gyrocopter in this angle is just suicide, so they'll fall back. That probably shouldn't have been a Weaver kill. Like, yes, the time lapse just to instantly get himself out of that, but uh, for Alton, uh... go a little bit too deep for just an Earth Spirit. Not even sure if that's worth committing the heroes for, honestly. It was a really good response from the Skylark, the, the Roaring Death Weaver, which is, by the way, Closing on the Lincoln Sphere, he only needs recipe if I'm not mistaken, yeah. And then it's gonna be a much harder for Skylark to lock down for the whole Adfinem too. Though they have a Earth Spirit, which is always pretty good against Weaver, with no target spells for a lockdown, all, all AoE abilities. I mean, we see Void skipping the Blast, picking up a Dagger. I think they're looking to fight early, looking for those big Chronos. And the invoker spells on it. But I don't think Adfina minds it. They have a DP, they have a Earth Spirit, they have a SMY, HOD, Madara Gyro, which is which is farming uh, pretty good, pretty good. Madara is one of the one of the best carries in Europe at the moment. Like at least like top five to ten, I would say. Uh, there's oh. gonna be a smoke gun on him. I think uh, Adfina <laughs> knows it. <laughs> They're well, just gonna throw everything on him. Yeah, being a high... Oh, he's actually gonna turn around and get the call down out at least. Not bad. Two missiles will connect onto Elisash. Spartan's going to arrive. Witch Doctor's got level 3 heal, though. Not easy pick off. He's gonna get brain sapped. Grip to cancel the TP is forced out. So they lose the Witch Doctor, but still kind of worth the trade as long as they don't lose anyone else on the retreat. Uh, yeah, skill level is not gonna protect you up against something like that, unfortunately. So uh, it is gonna be a gyrocopter down in favor of the alternate squad. But uh, yeah, it, we could see how long it actually took them to kill off the gyrocopter with that like that was absolutely everything being thrown in to that chronosphere but still just did not die before. he even got a couple of flat cannon shots off i believe but exotic is gonna run straight into skylark time lapse to get him out of range of the roar and keep himself alive but uh gyrocopter down is still working on a pretty big ancient stack it's triple right now but uh, it's going to be built up just a little bit more, and also they don't have any way of actually contesting that, I don't feel. And they don't have any way of get contesting this Roche either. With Thug's Exorcism, double damage rune as well, this should be dropping pretty quickly for Adfinem. Yeah, they, they go for it even without Necros, but they don't really care because they know they don't have Chrono, and that's the sign for them to go to Rush. Without Chrono, ATN cannot contest it. Invoker is walking around even without a TP, which is pretty greedy. Like, you usually see uh, players changing up this uh, Ring of Basilius for a TP, but he's gonna play greedy. He's gonna be finishing his eggs, which is great. The, with a Chrono, I think like, they look for a fight. At this Gyro without BKB, he's one of the... He really, really needed the Sages to work out this uh, greedy build, which doesn't have a BKB. But, but let's... Face it, like BKB is not gonna help him much. Mm -hmm. There is a Doom, there is a Death Ward, there is a Chrono. Like uh, maybe, uh, maybe only yeah, Sunstrike. Only against some of the Invoker spells and Melody. Like see, Skylark looking for opening, even popping Necros to secure the vision. Uh. <laughs> first hit bash, always first hit bash. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, not going to be relevant for them. Bottom lane, Death Prophet's going to get teleported upon. Doom is going to chase in with the Scorched Earth. They lift up into the air. TP from the Death Prophet still not used. Now time dilation and a Chronosphere is used. Sunstrike arriving. Weaver and Doom on the outskirts. Death Prophet, though, in a lot of trouble. She has a regen room, but I don't think she's going to get the time of day. She'll get beaten down. Doom's going to grab the last hit there up towards top lane. Elisash, left behind by his buddies, is going to be trying to teleport out. There's a roar here. Skylark is in range. Oh, we can't get it out in time. I thought for sure he would be able to get that one off, but all in all, for alternate, they get a free pick on a little bit of a greedy pushing death profit on bottom lane and don't lose anything in response. They dodge the fights. They dodge this Aegis. Yeah, it's really great play. A bit of a misplay of Adfina. You always need to be careful when the enemy's uh, Void has a Blink Dagger plus Time Walk. He can catch up so fast behind you. Cannot really run away. 
I mean, a little bit of a misplay from Adfina, but it's not gonna cause them much. Not a real objective. They're gonna be grouping up bottom with the uh, Mother TPing, pushing out top with the Skylark, probably TPing bottom to his team, having Necros of the cooldown in 15 seconds. Gonna try to take this tier 2 without any. without any exchange from the Radiant. Yeah, he's TPing. They wanna get this fast before the ATN gets to the middle tier 2. Mm -hmm. And before the Chronosphere comes up on Void, he's going for his own yeah. Aghanim Scepter Void, so uh, these timings are going to be a little bit harder for Adfiam to hit eventually, but uh, no Chronosphere for the alternate side probably means they're just going to still just look to dodge these fights, and they will start scratching at this mid-tier 2 Exorcism for Thug. It's not going to be used just yet. Without the Necro Units, oh, there they are, okay. So they will have the Necro Units, they will not use Exorcism. This tower is going to be dropping super quickly. They can maybe make a push for something else here. Oh. Uh, High ground, not going to be their option. It's going to be over towards mid lane where they're going to defend and push that one out simultaneously. Uh, still got this Aegis, still got this Exorcism, so yeah, you got to see what you can get with it. Only two minutes left, though. Not really sure if they can find a ton here. If they don't find a pick-off, I don't think they go high ground. It's uh, This Chrono is too scary mm -hmm. uh, to go high ground. They, uh, but they're happy defending the Tier 2 middle and taking the Tier 2 bottom. They're gonna try to keep as much pressure on the Radiant as they can with the, those vision from the Hawks of Beastmaster. They probably should be picking up a Gammon Spartan really soon, if not popping out Necros to devour the whole jungle, because this board next to tier 2 mid is really giving too much info for the ATN and giving, the, the, giving their heroes a free farm. Oh, Invoker. Uh, I think he's going to get hit with the trap because there's a grip here and a brain sap and he's magnetized and everything else as well. It's, they have a nightmare afterwards for a little more lockdown. Elisash is going to arrive in a little bit too late and he can't catch up to Spartan. Nish is going to arrive in, can't get, cancel the TP, will maybe go for this Bane, Glimmer and then fall back. A little of Jukes, maybe next time I'm just going to stand still in pure vision but still there's no one actually there to interrupt him, no one there to see him and he's going to get away. So they get a free pick off on the Invoker, Patience is rewarded. Over towards mid lane, Madra has the BKB, not an easy kill, they'll get the roar onto Nisha, Necro units now popped off, he's out of mana for Chronosphere, can't even time walk. Faceless Void is now going to be a casualty, as Adfinem found two picks, and this tower as well, this is exactly what they were looking for, this is exactly what we were talking about, they gotta get those pick offs, and on Faceless Void no less. Those two pickoffs are gonna allow them to go the high ground. Though they TP the maybe next time top, trying to catch this Weaver, but I don't see this happening with Weaver having Lincoln. Oh, he canceled the Weaver's level, TP. It's a oh, they canceled the TP actually. Yeah, we, Weaver's stuck up here. He has to. Well, there's no fight either way. They'll just pop the exes and take the mid raxes. Madra still has the fresh BKBs. Aegis is gonna be reclaimed soon. Give him a little bit of something, not much. But Weaver's gotta run back. That was. Uh, even if Weaver makes that TP, I'm not sure if Alternate can actually mount a defense there. So I'm not really sure how big it was in the grand scheme of things, but still, uh, Alternate, 25 minutes in, lose a set of Raxes without putting up any fight whatsoever. Yeah, pretty, pretty good play from Mad Venom. Really good executed with those pickoffs and getting to the high ground. Now they just gonna farm up and maybe look for some more pickoffs. Let's see, how many smokes do they have? They have no left in the shop. Maybe one on the Earth Spirit? No. Actually, no smokes left. Just gonna try to get this vision from the Hawks and stuff. Wait for another rush. Maybe even go without the Aegis if they get a good pickup, as you said, on, on Void especially. That's the hero to look for, to get. I mean, this uh, Doom allows Void to not go into the Vlad and to go straight to Axe. And they they do bring, uh, pick up the gem for the Beast Master. So they're gonna d -word almost all vision for the Radiant. Gonna make them scared, gonna make them stay together, get less farm than they would like to. Uh, alternate, they're kind of uh, all grouped up right now, and Adfin M are kind of okay with that as well, since they have that fresh BKB on the Gyrocopter. Exorcism is up in just 50 seconds. Uh, maybe Octarine built up before that, who knows? Uh, but bottom lane is gonna be pushed T1. Adfin M actually going to teleport a couple heroes back. Spartan's going to get spotted out by the Witch Doctor. Tornado to fly will not do anything. Another TP is coming in the trees. Leech is going to jump right in, but gets hit with a missile. Now the Roar. Nisha can't get the Chronosphere off. 
And now the Colin's right in the middle of everything. Modern with the BKB is going to town onto Supreme. And Lasasha Death Ward is being channeled, but it's not doing nearly enough. And he'll fall with the wit with the uh, Weaver at the same time. They have the Doom now left to deal with. Thugs in the eight glimmered out to freedom as the Doom will be the final casualty at BNM. Uh, was that a homing missile that killed off the faceless void there? He got time walked, blinked in, and then got immediately stunned up. I think it was a missile that actually interrupted that combo because otherwise you have a two man chronosphere there on the alternate side but add Finem just massacring that fight and now just going straight down the lanes they want to yeah. get something else they have mid lane pushing in they're gonna go straight bottom they have a, they are not gonna be able to get a megas from this they're gonna get another side effects are there any buybacks yeah there's gonna be a buyback for invoker but i don't think it's gonna stop them they they you you need to see that uh, they won that last fight without using exorcism so they have it now the radiant didn't use a chronosphere but it's not gonna mean much i think they just get this racks maybe losing one or two heroes but not much more Exorcism is going to town, still Rax are going to survive, Chronosphere is there only on Tamadra however, he's going to get maledicted and Doom is back in the back, but Soul Siphon, Exorcism, he's going to fall, they trade him for the Gyrocopter, still the call down is there, they'll flatten the Death Prophet with the Meteor, Exotic Deer with the Desolator charging forward for Spartan, going to pick off the Earth Spirit as well, maybe next time he's going to get time dilated, Cold Snapped as well, he's going to go into the Glimmer Cape form and actually try to juke back around, he's going to hide in the trees, oh it's not going to work out this time, Deafening Blast is going to be there, they take down tier 3, but spreading their damage between the range and melee raxes means that Adfinem get neither, and alternate actually make a reasonable hold. Yeah, very good uh, chrono, and very good play from, uh, or maybe even misplay from DP, like, and Invoker puts his uh, Force Spirits on the DP, and DP without any armor items, he loses his all armor, and then like, Doom comes and one-shots the DP, with the uh, chrono being on the gyro. Gyro popping the BKB late, but didn't make much difference. Still a really good fight for the ADM. Giving them uh, eggs on Void, this can be a game-changing item. Level 16 and eggs, we're looking at 60 second cooldown on the Chronosphere. Um, Invoker also, entry some items. We were picking up, picked up the Dazzle right before this fight and now already has a 2k gold left. I think he might go for some even more damage like MKB because Cairo is looking to a butterfly of course. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, one... at the very least dude, this is like such a more even game than last time. We got Lincoln Spheres coming up in the Weaver and Invoker now actually trying to make himself a Bane proof as Beastmaster proof as possible. But a butterfly is up in the gyrocopter. This guy is going to be so hard to kill. Oh, but here we go. Agnum Scepter on Witch Doctor. I was going to say, so much harder to kill off. But uh, Ag's Witch Doctor, not too terrible with the Ag's Faceless Void timing. Pretty much perfect on one another. Unfortunately for them, Madra is going to have another life again. And they really struggled to kill off the gyrocopter that first time. They're going to have to do it twice. With them being so reliant on their ultimates, I'm not really sure how possible that actually is. They are still smoked up. Maybe gonna catch an angle on the Spartan. No, no smokes are gonna bl be blown actually, but they're still gonna position themselves in this bottom lane. Super risky play here from Alternate. Being in this area where you don't exactly know where your enemies are coming from, they will be now surrounded. Mm, they're gonna they're go gonna over. Spot, spot Skylark. Yeah, it's gonna be a oh, freebie. No roar here. Spartan is gonna get a kick in. The gem's on the deck. Nisha's gonna jump in. Spartan's all his cooldowns are stopped right now, but here comes the call down and the grip. Weaver's gonna get himself out of there with the time loss, but he still get blown up afterwards. They lost three death ward from the trees. Gonna do a lot of damage onto the gyrocopter and death prophet, but not enough to even take out the Aegis. It's only Supreme to survive. There's so much damage coming out from this gyrocopter, and now Supreme, he's on the run. Blink forward from the Beastmaster. They will see him with a kick. And Modra's gonna close in to do all the damage. Silence as well. Another five man team wipe in favor of Adfinem. And Alternate put themselves in a position where they can't easily focus any one given target. I mean, it was unfortunate. They get to catch a Skylark off and then he immediately buys back and returns to the fight. But it ended up not being a good uh, got pick off. They don't even lose the Aegis. ATM loses the Invoker, doesn't have buyback, and now they're gonna go for a straight GG with the Necro units up and the Beastmaster aura. Uh, this is gonna be great. Uh, buyback from a Weaver, but can they hold it? The Aegis on Madara 
it's gonna do a lot. No, yeah, Doom is online. They're gonna Doom the DP, but is that really a target you wanna Doom? No exorcism from him. They just gonna hit the throne. Doom is down without buyback. Uh, Chronosphere. Nisha is gonna try to do what he can. Good Chrono, no Vigilactor ulti. Three more seconds, let's see. Let's see if Vigilactor ulti can do much work. It's let it fly, but Madara just kills him off. Buyback from Vigilactor. Invoker is coming 50 seconds. Another buyback on Void, but Supreme is gonna cool GG seeing this one. Pretty good Chronosphere. Through. Yeah, really pretty good, good Chrono, here, but, but... <laughs> sadly, Vigilactor ulti was like four seconds of cooldown. Yeah. It would be great to see what happens. I mean, we see this game, uh, Madara having a uh, much better time uh, than last game, which is uh, one of the most important things for the Greek squad. And uh, I think they're gonna look forward to on game three to make same happen. Give something that Madara is familiar with and feeling good on, and just give him a good time and he's gonna carry you through the game. I mean, it really was just like the gyrocopter running the show this time. He was under so little pressure. Uh, got jumped a couple of times for sure, but uh, just getting so much farm up by the end of it and alternate not with any decent answers. The Weaver at the end game was still super squishy and they just didn't have enough damage to kill off the Gyrocopter. The Chronospheres needed to be a lot better, although I'm not going to say it's Nisha's fault far, far from it. Uh, yeah, when you're that far behind, like you need Chronospheres to deal with the Gyrocopter. You need the Chronosphere to at least land on the Gyrocopter with some damage combo, but. Alas, not going to be there. Adfinem are going to win game two, guys. Alternate have the series tied up, so we're going to a game three. I'm Mike Lars. I've been joined by Milan, and we'll be right back for the final game between Alternate and Adfinem in just a little bit.